So, uh, Madam Vice President, if uh, you are ready, you can have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, let me thank you for this exchange of views today regarding the situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, as you know, the European Union has been a strong and consistent partner uh, of the Democratic Republic of Congo over the last 15 years. In 2006, we provided the bulk of financing for the organization of the first democratic elections in the history of Congo. And DRC has been one of our top priorities in Africa over the last decade. This includes two military operations and a sustained effort to support security sector reform uh, with two CSDP missions as well as more traditional areas of cooperation such as health, roads and natural resources management. Today, I think that many of you are especially concerned about uh, the delays and uncertainties surrounding the electoral process, which uh, includes the holding of local elections in 2015 and the legislative and presidential elections in 2016 at latest. The recent debate over the passing of a new electoral law has led to violent popular protests calling for respect of the constitutional timelines and to casualties. During these difficult moments, we called on all political forces to look for a consensus to facilitate an appeasement of the situation and, in particular, we asked the government to exercise restraint, to maintain an open political space and allow for peaceful expression of opinion. The prerequisite of organizing a general census before the legislative and presidential elections has now been dropped. This opens the door to organize the elections within the constitutional time frame. This is a very positive step, which I welcome, uh, and I also know that uh, some of you expressed opinions in the same uh, direction. But respect for the Constitution goes wider than respect of timelines. Freedoms of speech and of the media, the right of peaceful assembly, the respect of the rights of the opposition, are all essential components of a democracy. These critical elements will be part of our dialogue with the Congolese government with the objective of reducing the tension in the political climate. I am very much aware of and I share the concerns of the European Parliament for the situation of Dr. Denis Mukwege and of the Pansi Hospital. And let me uh, say that I was honored personally to sit in this very same room uh, listening to his inspiring and uh, dramatic words last November in the occasion of the Sakharov Prize. And I was also honored to have in that occasion uh, a very uh, good meeting with him, looking for uh, ways of cooperating uh, on concrete projects. I wish to confirm you that the European Union is following with great vigilance the situation concerning his physical security as a human rights defender. I have also asked my representative in Kinshasa to inquire about disputes between the Congolese administration and the Pansi Hospital. I strongly support an amicable agreement between the Pansi Hospital and the Congolese administration. The holding of democratic elections leading to a peaceful transition of power will be key for the longer term stability in DRC and in the wider region. Stability will also depend on other factors, in particular the neutralization of all armed groups in eastern Congo. There has been some significant progress in this respect, thanks to the efforts of the Congolese army and MONUSCO. Nevertheless, important challenges remain, for example, regarding the XM23 movement. Governments of DRC, Uganda and Rwanda should strengthen the collaboration to achieve a durable disarmament, demobilization and reintegration of ex-combatants and their dependents. The FTLR rebel group remains a major threat for the long-term stability in the region. Linked with the Rwanda 1994 genocide ideology, this group has inflicted immense human suffering and has spoiled the DRC-Rwanda relations. With the support of the United Nations, there is now a unique opportunity to address one of the root causes of conflicts in the Kivus. The FDLR movement has been given plenty of time by countries of the region to surrender peacefully. We discussed this in the Foreign Affairs Council uh, last uh, January uh, and we adopted uh, at 28 Council conclusions where we stated that the time has now come for uh, military operations. Still, we also stress 
that we invite MONUSCO and FARDC to ensure full protection of civilians and respect of international humanitarian law during the operations. Let me reiterate our support for the UN involvement in promoting peace and stability. This includes the sustained efforts to Monu of MONUSCO and all troops contributing countries, as well as the personal efforts of the UN Special Envoy for the Great Lakes region. Honourable Members, let me also stress that I know and I share your desire to curb the links between conflict and exploitation of natural resources in the Great Lakes region. As part of its comprehensive approach, the European Union has started to address the situation. Together with the Commission, as you might very well know, my predecessor has issued a joint communication on responsible sourcing uh, of conflict uh, minerals. And the Parliament and the Council are at this very same moment currently examining the draft regulations that went together with this communication. Finally, I would like to mention the European Union long-term commitment in the DRC in support for the preservation of Congolese national parks. This includes uh, the Virunga Park, which is part of the UNESCO World Heritage. The future of this park is threatened uh, by the granting of permits from oil exploitations that could lead to oil exploitation in the future. And let me assure you that uh, we will continue to keep a close eye at national decisions that might impact on the sustainability of this park. To conclude, I would just like to share with you uh, an information that uh, I have mandated uh, Mr. Verveke, the EU Senior Coordinator for the Great Lakes Region, to join a mission of special envoys that will go to Kinshasa just in the coming weeks to assess the situation and obviously report back. I thank you for your attention and I look forward to uh, your debate and listening to your interventions today. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Now we start a debate with the political groups. The first speaker is Mr. Stier for two minutes. Hvala, gospođo predsjednice. Doista problemi u Demokratskoj republici Kongo su mnogobrojni. Gospođo visoko predstavnice, vi ste nabrojili...